Hello, and thank you for coming to this talk, In Small Packages, Starting from Scratch with Qt for MCUs. I'm Brendan Lefevre, a Senior Solutions Engineer here at Qt. We'll start with a very brief overview of Qt for MCUs. I'll show you the example application for today, which is a simulated heartbeat monitor. Then I'll show you how to build that example from scratch, first by creating the UI in Qt Design Studio, then moving to Qt Creator to build out the C++ backend code and deploy our app to the target. If you have questions at any point in the talk, please put them in the chat box and I or someone else from Qt will respond. So very briefly, what is Qt for MCUs? It is a lightweight graphics framework and toolkit designed for small embedded platforms, mostly microcontrollers. It allows you to reuse UI assets from your big Qt projects, as well as the familiar tools Qt Design Studio and Qt Creator. It provides a new 2D hardware rendering engine that brings a smartphone like UX to low-end hardware. You can read more about Qt for MCUs at the link on this slide. This is the app we're going to build today. It's a simulated heartbeat monitor, and we see it here running on a microcontroller. So the first thing we'll do is use Qt Design Studio to build out the UI and set up some hooks to the back end. Qt for MCUs is integrated into Design Studio, so we create a new Qt for MCUs project, select our display size, and give it a name and location. Qt Design Studio lets us visually assemble the UI very quickly out of standard QML components. By default, it gives us a rectangle with a text element inside it to start with. We'll turn that text element into our title bar by changing its alignment, size, and position. Also along the way, I'll be giving unique ID names to each element for easy reference later. For our heart logo, I'm just going to use a wing ding from the character map, but Qt for MCU supports a variety of image formats as well. For the beats per minute readout, I'm going to have two separate text elements, one for the unit label BPM and one for the actual value. We'll set that to zero for now. We'll tweak the positions here so everything's lined up nicely. And let's change the colors to more of a dark mode palette.
Although we're assembling this UI visually, it is standard declarative QML under the hood. And if you know QML, you know that means we can create arbitrary properties on any QML object and expose them to the enclosing or parent object. So I'm going to our root element here and creating two properties, a Boolean named heart visible and an int named BPM value. You'll see why in a bit. Another thing you can do in QML is bind properties to arbitrary expressions rather than just static values. Design Studio lets you do that too. Right now I'm on the text object for the heart, and for its visibility property, instead of a static Boolean value, I'm going to bind that value to the property we just created on the root item. Similarly, I'm going to the text element for the BPM value, and instead of the static value 0, I'm binding it to our new property BPM value on the root item. I said earlier that this is standard QML under the hood. QDesign Studio lets us actually look at that QML by switching to edit mode. But it does warn you that if you edit this QML by hand, you risk introducing an element that the visual tools can't handle. So a good rule to work by, unless you know what you're doing, is to avoid editing this file by hand. By default, it's called screen01.ui.qml, and the extra UI in the extension reminds you it's meant for design mode only. But screen01 is not the main QML file. By default, the main file is named after your project, so in this case, heartbeatmonitor.qml, and that contains an instance of screen01. And the main QML is not a UI file, so we can do whatever we want there. This is why we created those properties on the root item of screen01. I can make some arbitrary QML here, some timers to create the blinky effect on the heart, and another timer to periodically update the BPM value. All of these timers, when triggered, will manipulate the two properties we added to the root of screen 01. Now the BPM timer will ultimately want that to call some method that queries our hardware interface for the BPM value. For now, I'll just set it to 80. Qt Design Studio comes with a QML player, so you can see and interact with your UI very quickly. Here we see the blinker effect in action, and we see the value initialize to 0 and update to 80. All of this tells us that we wired up our properties correctly. We're almost done with the Design Studio phase, but before we move to Qt Creator, I'm going to uncomment our call to the hardware interface and try the QML player again. Now we see that the BPM value initializes to zero, but does not update. And if we look at the Application Output tab, we can see we have a runtime error going off every time the BPM timer fires. This is to be expected because we haven't defined hardware interface yet. We're going to do that over in Qt Creator. So let's close the project here and jump over there. To tell Qt Creator that you have a qt for mcus project, you need to open the project's cmakelists.txt file, Qt Design Studio auto-generates this file when you create a Qt for MCUs project there. Next, we have to specify the kits for which we'll be building the app. Qt for MCUs gives you a desktop emulator, so we'll pick that along with the actual hardware board we're using today. We try building the project, and we see a compiler error. Qt for MCUs compiles our QML into C++, so it catches things at compile time that would ordinarily show up at runtime, like our undefined hardware interface. We have to fix that before we can run the project here. What we're going to do is create a C++ type called hardware interface and set it up in such a way that Qt for MCUs recognizes it as a type and a singleton object on the QML side. First, we declare the type in a couple of CMake macros. You'll see the abbreviation QULQL a lot. That stands for Quick Ultralight, which is the name for the subset of QML that we support in Qt for MCUs.
Next, we use the Qt Creator wizard to generate our CPP and H files. We update the header file by bringing in the QL singleton header, adding a template specification to the inheritance, and making the constructors private since this is a singleton. Most importantly though, we declare the public interface method readBPM that we already made a reference to in the QML. In a real project, the read BPM method would call into the hardware API to get the BPM value. For this example, we're just going to pull random integers between 75 and 95. I'm going to do a quick adjustment in the UI QML and set the color of the BPM value text based on the integer value. Again, you generally want to do this in Design Studio, but we know we can do these types of bindings in the Design Studio GUI, so it shouldn't break anything if we ever want to go back there. Try to build, and oops, another error. I forgot a piece when I was setting up the C++ type, which is that we need to make the QL singleton a friend class so it can access that private constructor. That's a pretty easy fix. And now we have the app running in our MCU desktop emulator. And if we watch the BPM values, we can see it pulling random integers from our read BPM method. And the color coding is working like we expect it to as well. Now we want to see it on the actual board. In Qt Creator, this is as simple as switching kits and recompiling. Qt Creator knows how to invoke the MCU vendor's tooling to flash the application to the board. I connect the board to my computer and click the Run button again. And there it is. So that's the talk. Thanks very much for attending. I know we went really fast, but I did only have 15 minutes. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions, and you can review the project source code at the link on this slide.